Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to our service at Christchurch this morning. Whether you're here in the, mil- in the building or whether you're joining us remotely far or near, at home or on holiday or anywhere else, it's good to have you with us as we join in worship this morning. Uh, this morning we're going to be looking at Psalm 23. It's a well-known psalm, but we're going to be looking at the theme that God is with us. You know, it's a great truth that we can know God is with us because of Jesus. Because Jesus came to be our saviour. Because he became human and he dwelt among us. And he demonstrated God's presence. And he gave his life upon the cross. And he rose again in victory. And he ascended on high and poured out his Holy Spirit. So that each and every one of us could know God's presence with us. It's a great truth that we're celebrating this morning. And so as we start our worship, I'm going to invite you to stand now, and we're going to pray together. So do please stand. Our Father God, we thank you. We're such a crowd of different people here in the building and logging on remotely. That for each one of us, that however we feel today, that whatever's happened to us this past week, that you love each one of us and you are for us today. Thank you, Jesus, that in your death and resurrection you have victory over all that would harm us and that you have given us your Holy Spirit so that we can know you with us, especially now as we gather together in your name. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit would fill our hearts and our worship this morning. O Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords forever. Amen. And so we worship the King of kings. King of kings Majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end, all within.
Would you please be seated? Let's pray. Father God, we've been singing of your great goodness. And we praise and thank you for just showering that goodness. And Father, we're going to read now a psalm that speaks of your goodness and love that can follow us all of our lives. And yet these words, for some of us, may be very familiar. So, Father, we pray that as your word is read now and as it is unpacked by John, 
Father, that your Spirit would open our hearts and minds afresh. And for each one of us to receive what you would be saying to us anew about your relationship with us through the words of this beautiful psalm. In Jesus' name, Amen. You might want to start to imagine yourself far away from the town or the city, out in the hilly countryside in all weathers, as we think about the Good Shepherd. Today's reading is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's just pray for a moment. Father, we just thank you for your word. And as we come to just spend these moments, may you be working and refreshing our souls in your name. Amen. See, I believe that one of the things that God wants to do for us this morning, whether you're here in person or whether you're joining us online, is for us to be able to lean into God. Because this whole psalm, whether it's familiar to you or not, reminds us of God's goodness and God with us. And reminds us that God wants to restore and to refresh us. And I believe that's one of the things that God is going to be doing while I'm speaking and while we're in worship this morning. Because I think God wants to touch us anew and refresh us anew. Because this psalm, although it is that kind of familiar psalm because it's often shared at funerals or in hard times, or I've often even sent it on WhatsApp messages to people that have been in hospital in this last year, actually this psalm is a psalm for the everyday. It's a psalm for understanding our discipleship and understanding how we follow. It's a psalm for making a real difference to our lives. And the first thing that makes a real difference is something that's very small. Something that's very small. You see, in life, there are many things that are small. It only takes a small push of a button to set off an explosion. It only takes a small thing with the right lever to move a great big thing. And there's a little word here, a small word, that makes all the difference to our discipleship. And it's what David, the writer of this psalm, had really come to know. And it's a simple two-letter word. My. My. You see, David knew that the Lord was my shepherd. And David wrote this psalm, and it's collected here, that actually when we read it, or when we sing it, the Lord is our shepherd, my shepherd. He's not just shepherd of the person that's next to you, or the person that's been in church for a long time, or the person who's just arrived for the first time today. The Lord is my shepherd, no matter where we are. He's my shepherd. He's your shepherd. It's personal. It's not secondhand. It's a relationship to be experienced and encountered. It's a relationship there for us. That small word makes all the difference. And anyone who follows Jesus can say, The Lord is my shepherd. For Jesus himself said, I am the good shepherd. So if you follow Jesus, if you know Jesus, the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. 
You see, David, who wrote this psalm, he knew what the life of a shepherd was like in those days. He knew that the shepherd led and guided people. He knew that the shepherd led and guided the sheep, and he protected the sheep, and he took them to good places. That's what the Lord does for us. The Lord leads and guides, protects and provides. The Lord is my shepherd. It's almost that everything for the sheep was in the hands of the shepherd. And many of you will even know that famous parable, that parable of the one sheep that had gone missing, and the Lord went to find him and bring him back, to find her and bring her back. The Lord is my shepherd. And so it continues, I lack nothing. What's that? Well, actually, we lack nothing in the kingdom of God. Everything is available to us. The voice of God is available to us. The resources of heaven are available to us. Everything we need for discipleship is available to us. Jesus says himself, if you don't have, ask. And so if in this moment this morning you are like, feel like you are lacking something, why don't you ask God to provide who gives generously to all who ask him? Take the opportunity while we're sharing to be asking for everything that is needed for our discipleship and walk with the Lord. He provides. That's what David had experienced. That's what David knew. And that's what we get to know. And as the shepherd led the sheep, He makes them lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. I don't know if during this lockdown you've had the fun of being able to walk along the River Lee, or up the River Rib, or the River Bean. You know, it's a lovely, flourishing place in spring. You get to see all the lush grass. You get to hear the quiet waters, although I'm afraid I wouldn't drink from them straight. You know, there is something that's peaceful as you walk out amongst them. And although that sense of lots of green grass for the sheep was there, it's actually lie down. It's stop. It's pause. It's rest. Rest in the beauty of God. Stop and rest with God. No matter what else is going on, pause and rest. God wants us to be in good green pastures, in places that restore Those quiet waters, not the noisy choppy, but you know how refreshing that gentle, quiet sound of water is. That gentle movement is relaxing. It's there. That's what God wants for us to be able to rest in those places. He makes us lie down. And sometimes he makes us stop. We don't just stop. He makes us. He chooses to help us to stop and be restored by quiet waters. And what happens? He restores us. He refreshes our souls. You see, I think that sometimes it takes time for the Lord to refresh our souls. That's why at the end of this service today, if you're here in church, there's going to be a time longer of worship for you to be able to rest if you wish to in God's presence and allow him to continue to minister to you. You see, I want you to think of it as that dry pot plant in the corner of your lounge or kitchen that you've been away on holiday and you've forgotten about. And uh, most of you have got one, and it seems to have like died in the corner. You know, the spider plant with the stuff that's dying on the sides of it or the whatever it is. And you know how the soil just goes rock hard in there, and you get your glass of water or your watering can, and you pour it on it, and it nearly just flows over the sides because it won't soak in. But you see it sit there for a while, that bit of water, and it starts to slowly soak in. And you know, when you go to top it up a little bit more, actually it goes in easier. Why? Because the hard, dry soil starts to get softer. And so you add some more, and eventually you can see that the soil is now moist, and there might even be some water in the 
tray at the bottom of the plant. And over the next few days, as you slowly water that plant, you actually start to see leaves regrow. You might see a flower come back. You see a new green lushness. And I believe one of the things that God often wants us to do is to make us to stop to be in that place of a green pasture, to be in that place where he can actually restore our souls. It doesn't happen in five minutes. It happens over time. God wants to restore and regularly restore. And one of the things is that can happen in the everyday even on the train to work or in your study or out for a walk. It's about creating that space for our souls. Our souls being that part of us that integrates our mind, heart, body, and spirit. That piece where so often we get scattered in so many different ways, actually it can be torn apart and come dry and hard. And the Lord wants to give us that water over time to refresh and to renew us. I believe at the beginning of this service, as we started worshipping, even with 10,000 reasons, if you're here in church, you will have started to have that drip of refreshment and started to have that refreshing in your soul. It takes time. And you see, when we're refreshed, you get the fact in verse 3 that he guides us along the right path. Look, again, he guides me. It's individual, it's you. You know, if we believe that God has the best for us, there is a right path and a wrong path. The right path is following him and his voice. Jesus himself said, my sheep know my voice, they listen to me, they follow me. There is a right path, a path that restores and renews and reintegrates and makes us whole. And there is a wrong path that disintegrates, that isn't for our best interests, isn't for us flourishing or our community flourishing. The right path, that guidance, that righteousness, that following of Jesus, he guides me along right paths. Why? Because I'm brilliant? No. Because you're brilliant? Sorry, no. Actually, it's simple here. For his name's sake. Why? Jesus loves you, he knows you, and he wants to restore you. Simple. He wants the people of God to be the people of God, flourishing, refreshed, and renewed. That's what he wants. Why? For his name's sake. He died that you might live. That's the point. It's for him. But you know, Following Jesus, sometimes we think that means that if it's on the right path, it's always going to be okay. It's always going to be easy. But this psalm doesn't let us get away with that. This psalm actually says that sometimes the journey that you go on is a journey through the darkest of valleys, the driest of nights, the hardest of places. Just look at verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley... And I'm sure that for some of you over the last 18 months, there have been moments that have been really dark. And for some of you, you might even be in them at this moment. You might actually be thinking, what is going on here? I don't understand. I don't know. I feel distanced even from God. But the thing is that what God does is he joins us and he walks with us in that darkest valley. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God doesn't suddenly get us and take us out of the valley. God comes and joins us and walks with us through the valley. If you use the old version, you'll know that it says the valley of the shadow of death. And for some of you, you will have been feeling that because of people you've lost or those you've known or other situations that you're grieving. God comes and joins us in the midst of it, and God wants to come and provide, and in the midst of it, to start to refill and renew your soul. That's what this passage is about. It's not taking you out of the hard stuff, it's meeting you in the midst of it. 
For nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. That's why it says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The darkest, deepest moment, whether you feel like it or not, the Lord is with you and will hold on to you and will strengthen you. For the Lord is with you. And it's in the midst of that that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That thing of protection, that thing of counseling, that thing of looking after, of leading and guiding, of defending you. The Lord is with you in the midst of that valley. The Lord is with you in the midst of that valley. And not only that, the Lord will take you through that valley to a better place. That's what David knew. And there were so many times in his life that he'd been on the run and he'd been, had lost everything. And yet he knew that God was with him and God would always come through for him. Why? Because verse 5 says this, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There's a sense of feasting, of celebration. One of the things that we see so much in Scripture is that sense of abundance of celebration, certainly in the end days when we go to be in heaven, but moments of feasting and of joy, moments of celebration, they come after the valley. And here, God prepares that table. Jesus himself says, I've got food that you don't know about, food for the journey. And I've got food for a celebration. God wants to restore us, whether we are in the valley or in a place of rest and doing well. And he wants to give us those moments of celebration, both now and in the future. Why? Because he has called us and he has set us apart. We know that again from this passage. Verse 5, you anoint my head with oil. Some of you, when you were baptized, might have even had a cross of oil on your head. In the Old Testament, they used to pour oil on people's heads. Why? To set them apart. As a sign of being called by God. As a sign of being God's. And here we see the Lord anoints us with oil. And one of the things about that oil is it smelts. It's not a bad smell, by the way, before you all start thinking that. It's a good, fragrant smell. It's one that fills the whole room. God wants to anoint us with his oil that sets us apart, marked out for him, with a fragrance that impacts every single space where we are. Whether it's in the workplace or school, that impacts wherever we walk to, whoever we talk to, whoever we encounter. It's the fragrance of Christ. It's the fragrance of his spirit. It's the fragrance of him. That's what he wants. You anoint my head with oil. By the way, you can't wipe it off because he does it anyway. That's what the psalm says. When Jesus is ours, he pours his oil onto us. He protects us. He helps us to change the atmosphere, to change the smell in the room. And my cup overflows. You know, when you first get one of those bottomless drinks at a restaurant or a a theme park, and you can go back time and time again. And actually, if you fill it, and you think you can't keep going back, you might try and fill it to the brim, and it almost goes over the top. God says, actually, your life, stick it in, keep the machine on, let it overflow, and drink from it. Because our cup overflows. Goodness. That's what God wants us to do. And yet, so often, the reason why the psalmist says, you make me lie down in good places, is we don't want to take our cup and take it to the machine to be filled by the Spirit, to receive the water of refreshment. We don't, we'd rather be the plant pot on the side that's not being watered than to stick it under that water over a long time so that actually we are overflowing like a tree planted by streams of living water in Psalm 1. My cup overflows. And you know, One of the things about the psalmist that he's learned to be able to say, just as we sung a few moments ago, is that no matter what, 
whether in the valley or in good times, whether in celebration or in hardship, God's goodness and mercy and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now is a chance to be able to sample the future heaven when we sit in God's presence, when we rest in Him, when we receive from Him. So Psalm 23 is an amazing psalm. It's a psalm that's so familiar, but it has so much for us. The Lord is our shepherd. He's my shepherd. He takes us to places of rest, even in the hard times. He's with us in the darkest valleys. He comforts us and he strengthens us. And he will help us to feast again. And he wants us to be the fragrance of him wherever we are. God is with us. God is with you. It's a promise of God to live by. It changes your life when you recognize that little two-letter word, my shepherd. And so what I'd love you to do is in your mind and in your heart in this moment, I want you just to say, the Lord is my shepherd. There's something about just saying it, acknowledging it. And so I'm just going to give you a moment of space just to do that. And as we acknowledge the Lord as our shepherd, actually the Lord wants to meet with you. So I just invite you, wherever you are, whether you're here in church or whether you're at home or on holiday or wherever you are, just to open your hands as a sign of openness to him. And for some of you, you will be exactly feeling like that plant pot a bit dry at this moment in time. And for some of you, you will be feeling like you are in the valley. And for each of you in that place, Holy Spirit, you already are with us. You already are inside us, testifying to our spirits that we are children of you. Will you just release your living water in us? Will you start to restore our souls? Will you start to fill us with your presence? Will you start to renew and strengthen us this day? And Lord, as you start to do that, will you grant us your soul rest? Where we need to know your comfort in that dark place, where we need to know your provision, where we don't know what to do or how it's going to be provided for or where life's gone wrong, will you come and comfort us? And Father, for those in a really good place, may they just smile again and celebrate. May their cup overflow. Holy Spirit, will you just come and meet with us? And into this space, I believe the Lord wants to minister in the same way I said about the plant and resting in his spirit, resting with the water soaking in. I'm just going to invite Viv and Chris, and they're going to come and just continue to lead us in worship in a moment. I want you just to rest where you are. And if you want to join in, join in. Or if you just want to receive, allow the Lord just to meet with you in this space. Allow that refreshing, that strengthening to rise up. For he is here, he is present, and he's on your side. For he is your shepherd. He is my shepherd. And he's doing it for his name's sake. Why? Because he loved you. He died for you. He rose again for you. And he wants you to know his presence and to know him. Just what 
God is with us, we know he hears us as we speak to him, and we continue in his presence now as we bring our prayers to him, Heather. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I think we've learnt that this morning, haven't we? God is is with us. Maybe you can feel him with you, maybe you can't, but he is with us. The Lord is my shepherd. We've been blessed this weekend by being able to listen to some new wine talks um, online, and the first talk that I listened to, um, the pastor there prayed. Um, a very simple but profound prayer. We probably all prayed it at some point in our lives. Father, help us. The Lord is my shepherd. Father, help us. Another talk I listened to, um, the, the, the speaker t um, turned and said, um, we've experienced a lot of difficulty this year. Job losses, illness, cancer tests, miscarriages, and mental health collapses. And we, as a church, have been through that. 
but the Lord is my shepherd. God is with us in those job losses, in those illnesses, in those cancer tests and miscarriages and mental health collapses and all the things we have experienced. The Lord is my shepherd. God is with us. We've had a golden weekend spiritually in tuning in with the new wine stuff and it's been a golden weekend for the Olympics. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we've been able to watch different sports and learn and see people winning. Father, help us to look after our bodies in the way that we should. The Lord is my shepherd. God is with us. It's the school holidays and many of us are maybe away. Maybe you're tuning in from your holiday today. Maybe you're tuning in because you're in self-isolation. But the Lord is my shepherd. God is with us. As I mentioned earlier, um, job losses have been a, a key thing and one in five firms plan on letting staff go. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's friends of yours. The Lord is my shepherd. God is with us. As we think more worldly, and maybe we've forgotten to pray for these countries. We think of the countries that we've prayed for in the past. Afghanistan, Iraq, Iran, Israel, Palestine, South Africa. The Lord is my shepherd. God is with us. Psalm 23 verse 4 reads, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. We are on our life journey, walking along. We may be feeling the valley of the shadow of death. There are shadows, but for shadows to form, there has to be a bit of light. May God be that light as we walk our journey. And then in verse 3 we read from Psalm 23, He refreshes my soul. And maybe if you're tuning in at home, you've got a coffee or a drink near to you. Maybe if you're here in church, you've got your water bottle. So why don't you grab it and use that as a symbol of your soul being refreshed. Amen. And let's conclude our prayers by praying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. So we pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. John. 
Yeah, well, I've got a couple of notices for us this morning, today. Uh, First is, uh, our latest copy of the church magazine is now available at Baca Church, so please do pick it up. Um, Can we just give all those who've written articles and helped put it together a huge round of applause? Because it's so encouraging to hear what God is doing in the everyday. So you'll find news from some of our mission partners, from some of our youth work, from our prayers. You'll even see uh, some of the pictures done by our own local artists and opportunities where people have spent time with the Lord. So enjoy having a read. It's also, if you watch online, it's available on our website under the magazine section of our website. So please do enjoy. As was mentioned in the prayers, New Wine Online has been happening this weekend and it's still Monday and Tuesday as well. And uh, so if you've got children or youth, the Luminosity stream and the kids stream are still running. And at this evening at 7, or just before 7, we're going to gather here to be able to watch the evening session together if you'd like to. There's going to be an update from Tear Fund, a time of worship, and there's also a time of talk and ministry. So feel free to come and join with others uh, this evening if you would like to here in church. So please do be enjoying together and also do continue to be praying throughout the summer. Do check out the website for all the latest things that are happening, including the children's activities during the week starting this Tuesday as well. But it's lovely that you're here with us, and so why don't we just enjoy joining in with our next song. So I invite you just to stand. Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust. Please would you be seated. 
We come to our closing prayers now, but do feel free to stay and then just listen and enjoy the worship after that. So let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the promise that you are with us. And as we go out into this coming week, uh, some of us may experience the green pastures and the still waters. And for other of us, it may be the dark valleys. Thank you for your promise to be with us. Lord Jesus, may that be real for each one of us in the paths that we follow, as we choose to follow the paths of righteousness this week. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us now and remain with us always. Amen.
Sacrifice. Oh, use me how you want to. 